Welcome back to Dr. Logic, Awkwardly Does Logic in her office. Thank you for joining me today. Today we are going to talk about arguments, and I'm going to give you three definitions. Now, definitions are one of the most crucial tools that a logician has, because a well-defined definition will make precise what it is that we are working with, and if we have a well-defined definition, one of the most important things that we can do as a logician is to determine whether something that we have meets those definitions or not. So this will be another theme that will run through these videos, the importance of being very precise about what we are trying to define and then looking at a scope of various things and being able to say, yes, this falls under the definition, no, this does not. So the first definition I give you is actually going to be a definition of logic, even after saying in my previous video that it was going to take us all year to actually define this. This is going to be a working definition, and it's something we'll come back to and revise over time, but the very first definition is logic is the study of good arguments. As a definition, this is an exemplary one. It's clear, it's simple, it's elegant, but as an explanation of what logic is, it's rather lacking because I haven't said what an argument is or what a good argument is. And so telling you that logic is the study of good arguments doesn't really tell you very much. So this is where our second definition comes in. I'm going to give a definition of arguments, which is broad enough to allow any of the various things that you might count as an argument to count. So. This goes back to the importance of making our definitions clear and precise. There are many things out there in the world, some of which are arguments, some of which are not, and we want to be able to come up with a definition that captures everything that counts as an argument and none of the things that we don't want to. So our second definition, and I have this written up, is that an argument is a pair consisting of a finite, possibly empty, set gamma of sentences by one, by two, by three, dot, dot, dot. These are called the premises. And the second half of the pair is a single sentence, psi, called the conclusion. Now, if you don't recognize these symbols, so we've got gamma, we've got these phi's, we've got this psi, don't worry, because the next video is going to be all about notation. For the time being, ignore the symbols and think of arguments as being collections of sentences of which we put a whole bunch of them together to one side and say these are our premises and one kind of designated sentence this is our conclusion now this is a very liberal account of argument because it doesn't require any sort of connection between the premises and the conclusion so on this definition the vast majority of arguments are going to not really be recognizable as arguments in the ordinary usage of the term, and they're also going to be really, really bad arguments. For instance, something that counts as an argument on this definition is the pair of sentences, we are in Durham, therefore it is sunny. Now, you might think, well, Durham is in the northeast of England, this is not the kind of place that is normally sunny, what kind of connection is there, this isn't a very good argument, but you could still see how somebody might you know, tried to argue in this way, it's just not very good. But suppose that I also said 2 plus 2 equals 4, my favorite author is J.R.R. Tolkien, I like to draw, therefore cats are the best animal in the world. This doesn't look at all like an argument. However, what we are interested in when we define arguments is this relationship of sentences to each other. And so for our purposes, all that we need arguments to be is some collection of which some are the premises and some are the conclusion. What's interesting, though, is going to be the definition of good argument, because you remember our first definition, logic is the study of good arguments. We want to be able to specify what this goodness means. So as a first pass, I will give you definition three, a Good argument is one in which the conclusion is a consequence of the premises. Now we are in a position of being able to ask, what do you mean by consequences, Dr. Logic? This is where the fun begins, because there are many different ways that we can spell out this type of consequence. So you might want to have 
the so-called logical consequence. After all, this is the study of logic that we are talking about. So this is what you will generally find in ordinary introduction to logic textbooks or introduction to logic courses. They only focus on logical consequence and it has to do with this very tight necessary truth preservation definition, which we will talk about, but probably not for a couple of months. But perhaps the connection of consequence between the premises and conclusions is probabilistic or inductive or dialogical. Maybe it has to do with the nature of the discursive context that we are working in. Maybe it's an epistemic consequence. Maybe it has to be, for all that we know, if we know the premises, then we have to know the conclusion. Maybe it has to do with belief. Maybe we are looking at doxastic consequence. Or maybe we are just looking at consequence, a, a consequence relation between the premises and the conclusion that allows us to express when we have reasonable grounds for assertion. So this was again something I talked about in the previous video. Because of the variety of ways in which good can be defined in the context of good argument, we will have to be able to give specific definitions for each one of these contexts. And that will be the subject of future videos. Thank you.